Hello, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my September TBR and I'm really excited. I have not really made TBR videos the past few months but I feel ready and like back into it and I was going, I had this like late August TBR that I put up that I was like be super ambitious and read all these books in the end of August and I ended up not doing that so I'm gonna definitely take my lesson from that and try and set myself up for success with the TBR and kind of my mindset now is that I want to make sure if I'm gonna be making a TBR that it's gonna be the books that I really want to prioritize that month and it's not necessarily all-encompassing of every single book that I want to read this month just because I find that my pace is slowing down kind of like as I have more hobbies and things that I pick up on as I go throughout life. So I just want to make sure that I am making it sustainable and manageable to myself and if I set myself up with these huge TBRs every month and then I'm never meeting it, I like kind of feel bad. So for me personally, it keeps me motivated with reading. I just kind of want to make goals that are achievable for myself and my current state of life. And the reason that I did not finish my late August TBR is because I got a puppy. So um, that kind of took over for a little while, but I'm getting used to the dog mom life. So I feel ready to read again. But like for the first week, I was like, um, don't, I don't think I have the time. It's a little bit tiring running around after a little critter, but worth it. So yes, so the way that I've structured my TBR this month, I started doing this in the beginning of 2020 and then I just stopped doing TBRs because like quarantine. You know but the way i started doing it in like february march was i picked four or five top books of the month that i wanted to read and then maybe like a manga and a graphic novel so this month i have five books i think and then one like rollover book from that and these are going to be the books that i'm just like really going to focus on reading this month and i'll tell you like where the source is for each one and then you know if i end up reading more in the month like there's nothing wrong with that and then I'll just kind of like choose that one based on like what I'm feeling at the moment so I feel good about this I feel set up for success and I feel like this just kind of helps me prioritize what are the next few books that I want to read that I'm like really in the mood for when I sit down to think about it and write out this TBR so the first book that I am going to read this month is a rollover book from last month and that is The Damned by Renee Adier I actually have a e-copy on my kindle which I'm um, Got a little bit chewed, but you know what? I can just always buy another case. That's not a big deal as long as the actual Kindle itself is not damaged. So that's just puppy life for you. So this is the sequel to The Beautiful. I read The Beautiful last year and I really was surprised by how much I love it. The Beautiful is kind of like bringing vampires back again, but not like straight up vampires. It's a little bit more subtle than that, but I do think the second book is going to have more vampires. So set in the 1870s in new orleans which is just such like a great atmospheric setting for like the city of just this vibrant life and 1800s victorian times really cool so celine rosseo flees france after a terrible accident occurs and she is basically running for her life trying to escape the guilt and overwhelming feelings that threaten to consume her and once in new orleans she takes up a residence in a monastery with some other young girls that are coming from overseas and she soon finds herself embroiled in the glittering underworld of the court of lions led by their enigmatic leader sebastian saint germain and they find themselves drawn to one another however a terrible string of murders plagues the city of new orleans and when one of the girls from the monastery turns up dead celine feels like she may be next however she will stop at nothing to figure out who or what is really behind these murders and the first book ended on such a cliffhanger and i think that there's going to be a big turning point for a lot of our characters especially celine and bastian and i'm really interested to see how it goes and what this is going to take and i feel like the first book kind of focused more on the murders and not necessarily the paranormal elements but i feel like the second book is going to take us into more of the lore and the mythology of the world and i'm excited for it and i started reading it i'm at five percent and i'm filming this on the last day of august so we'll see how far i can get but i will definitely still be reading it in september because i don't think i will finish this before midnight when it's like currently 7 p.m so yeah so that's the first book and then the next book that i want to read this month is actually a book that is coming out 
tomorrow or what is probably today when I'm posting this and that is Blood and Honey which is the sequel to Serpent and Dove by Shelby Morin and I feel like this is a book that divided the booktube community when it came out like it got a lot of positive reviews at first and then a lot of negative reviews and then a kind of mishmash which I feel like is kind of common for some books but anyways I loved it and this is the story of a witch and a witch hunter bound in holy matrimony. Louise Leblanc fled her coven two years ago and is living in the city of Cesarine, forsaking all magic. And then we have Reed Diggory, who works for the church as a chaucer, and he is basically sworn to hunt down and kill all witches. When an embarrassing public stunt basically leads them to have to get married or else Reed will face public humiliation, the witch and the witch hunter are bound together. Now Louise is within the church, within the walls of her enemy, and she also has to fight her growing feelings as well as some threats from the outside and the world at large to survive. Now the sequel Blood and Honey follows our characters after the explosive events of the end of Serpent and Dove and we see that Luis and Reed have to go their separate ways on different quests and will this physical separation lead to a rift between them and their marriage and I think we also are focusing more on Coco who is a blood witch as opposed to Louise who is a white witch so I don't know I'm curious to learn more about the blood witches more about Coco and see what exactly is going on and how this series will go I don't know if it's a duology or not but if it is I'm looking forward to seeing how it wraps up and if it's not then just want to see what happens in the second book i just really enjoyed like the atmosphere again it was like kind of french inspired but not like set in a real city and i liked the magic system i thought the chemistry between our two romantic leads was really good so i'm hoping we can get some more spicy spice this sequel so yes looking forward to it the next book I have on my list here is Golden Fury by Samantha Coho, and this is a debut. I was sent an arc by Wednesday Books, so thank you so much Wednesday for sending this my way. A Golden Fury is set in 1792 France. Thea Hope is a teenage alchemist on the verge of a life-changing discovery. She works with her mother, who is a famous alchemist, on creating the Philosopher's Stone. However, as they are so, so close to finally cracking the secrets and making the stone, her mother destroys their work in a fit of violent rage. And now Thea is determined to do anything to unlock the secrets of the stones. However, creating the Philosopher's Stone is every alchemist's dreams and they will stop at nothing to steal the stone's power. On top of that all, the Philosopher's Stone is said to be cursed. So will the cost of the Philosopher's Stone be at Thea's own mind? I just love a good Philosopher's Stone alchemy story. Also, why are all the books I'm choosing this month, the first three are all French inspired? I don't know. It, it just it just happened. Love me some good, good old Philosopher's Stone alchemy classic classic. The next book that I am planning on reading is The Silence of Bones by June Her, and this is a book that has kind of intrigued me ever since I read the description and I do want to kind of try and branch out from reading just fantasy even though that's what I love. I do like to dip into some other genres as well so this is a YA historical fiction slash murder mystery thriller type yeah i just i read the description for this and i just thought it was really cool and i saw that my library had it and i put in for a hold and my hold should be up in two weeks so hopefully i will get to read it then and i just am really looking forward to reading it so what is the sign of the bones about well it is set in 1800s in joseon korea and seul is a 16 year old who has been orphaned and abandoned and so she becomes indentured to the police bureau where she is assigned to assist a young investigator on the brutal politically charged murder of a notable noble woman. As she continues working on the case with the investigator they become good friends. However, when the investigator becomes the main suspect, Seoul may be the only one left that can solve the case. And the thing that really gripped me about this description was this quote and it says, I have a mouth, but I mustn't speak. Ears, but I mustn't hear. Eyes, but I mustn't see. So I think that this is really going to have a lot of commentary on classism and class structure in 1800s Korea. And I think it will be interesting to just learn more about that through this fiction novel. Just, uh, just something that's like outside of the norm of what I usually read, but it really caught my attention. And the last book I did that with is Mexican Gothic, which is kind of outside of what I normally read for and I end up loving it. So hopefully I end up loving this one too. The next book that I have on my TBR is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armitrout. And I bought this book a while ago because it was like on sale for 99 cents on Kindle. And I'm like, 
why not? And Jennifer L. Armentrout has like been around forever and has so, so many books. I was looking through her author page. She has so many books. I've not read any of them, but the description of this one really caught my eye and it is a new book. So I'm like, I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a try. So from Blood and Ash, follows Poppy who is destined to be a maiden. She has no choice in this matter and the maiden is duty bound to not be looked at, not be heard, and experience no pleasure in life. Poppy would rather be with the guards training to fight the evil that threatens her family. Poppy really struggles with her inner emotions and desires, especially when Hawk, a handsome young guard, is assigned to ensure her ascension. Meanwhile, a fallen kingdom threatens to reemerge from the shadows through blood and violence, and the line between forbidden and right becomes blurred. So it just sounds like a good old classic fantasy, maiden, some good stuff going on there, and I'm very intrigued by the description, so I want to read it. The last book that I have on my TBR for this month is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace, and this is actually a birthday present from Austin back in April, so thank you so much, Austin, for this, because I have been wanting to read this for a while, and I have it because that's how life goes, you know? Amora is the princess of the island kingdom of Visidia, and in order to ascend to the throne, she must prove her mastery of the dangerous soul magic, and she's been training her entire life to be the high and master, master of souls. When her demonstration goes awry, she has no choice but to flee, and she joins up with a rogue pirate named Bastion, and they strike a deal. If he helps her prove that she is fit to rule the kingdom, she will help him reclaim his stolen magic. However, a destructive new magic is rising across the kingdom, and Amora must face this as well as legendary monsters, cross paths with vengeful mermaids, as well as a stowaway that she never expected, or risk the fate of Visidia and lose the crown forever. So it just sounds like a good seafaring adventure. I love me a good seafaring adventure. Books set on the ocean, princess pirate books i'm always a fan so yeah i've been wanting to read this for a while and when i was going to pick my tbr i just kind of like looked at my shelf and I'm like what's a book that i've been wanting to read and i just haven't and i picked this one so that's what ended up on my tbr and then i'm probably for manga i do want to read the next volume in yuna of the dawn this is a manga series that I have been slowly working my way through for a few months now and I think I'm probably going to try and read like one or two a month and this follows Princess Yona who lives an ideal life as a princess and then on her 16th birthday her world is turned upside down when her father is murdered in a coup and so her faithful guard hack takes her and they run away and now they are going to try and do everything to reclaim her kingdom and they're going on a journey and now she has to find these four ancient dragon warriors and that is part of where the part in the journey where they are at and yeah i just like adore this i love it so much it's really fun a good mix of like fluffiness and adventure and i'm just kind of glad that i chose this as like the manga series that i kind of want to go all in reading um i don't read like a ton of manga so i kind of tend to read through the series pretty slowly and i also am always looking for new manga series to read my sister did recommend me tokyo ghoul so i may check that out in a few months but yes that is my plan for the month i will probably read this and then whatever else i end up reading this month hopefully i get through all of those and then i may pick up something else that is unknown at this time because i just kind of like living on the edge so thank you so much for watching my tbr please comment down below if you are interested in any of these books or just want to talk about what you are going to read in september i love interacting with you guys in the comments it just always makes my day and happy reading this september have some fun read some books and i'll catch you guys in the next one